This object recalls an Epicurean escapade that got two high-flying spacemen in a heap of trouble. This is the story of hunger, a pioneering space mission, and an astronaut that tested the limits. It's the early 1960s, the dawn of the space race. The Soviet Union and the United States are battling for control of the final frontier. And the Soviets are in the lead. After launching Sputnik, the world's first man-made satellite, they have launched the first man, Yuri Gagarin, into orbit. But the United States refuses to concede defeat. On May 25, 1961, President John F. Kennedy ups the ante in an historic speech to Congress. To achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. The remarks kick America's space program into high gear. Just nine months later, John Glenn becomes the first American to orbit the Earth. Oh, that view is tremendous. Subsequent one-man missions push the envelope even further. Then in 1965, NASA embarks on the next stage of getting a man to the moon, a series of flights that will take not one, but two astronauts into space. This bold endeavor is called Project Gemini. The Gemini program was a stepping stone to the moon. One minute, T-minus 60 seconds and counting. Roger, Lash. At 9.24 a.m. on March 23, 1965, One, the Gemini 3 space capsule is launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida. On board are 34-year-old John Young and 38-year-old Gus Grissom. Gus was a test pilot for many years and had been up to space. So he was the commander, and John Young was a rookie astronaut. The duo's mission is to circle the Earth three times. Along the way, they'll test a new piece of equipment that is essential for reaching the moon. A set of rocket thrusters designed to maneuver the craft. You can't just cold build a machine and aim it at the moon and land. You would have to control your vehicle up in space. But it will be no easy task. Yes. Even a tiny miscalculation or misfire could send the astronauts careening into outer space. As the craft glides high over Texas, Grissom fires the thrusters. As hoped, the equipment operates perfectly. It's an historic moment. They were the first ones to actually pilot their craft in space. With the white knuckle maneuver complete, Young and Grissom turn to another vital aspect of spaceflight, food. Scientists at NASA have created an array of pre-prepared meals designed to be eaten in space. On the menu are packets of freeze-dried shrimp cocktail and chicken legs that can be rehydrated with a cold water gun. The only problem is they taste disgusting. When we think about having chicken legs, you picture biting into a nice, hot, fresh chicken leg. You don't picture sort of this powdery thing that's been pumped back up with cold water. To Young, the thought of dining on rehydrated chicken while flying above the Earth hardly fits the occasion. So he presents Grissom with a delicious piece of contraband he smuggled on board before takeoff a corned beef sandwich. It was from a restaurant that they all liked, a little deli down in Cocoa Beach. This sneaky snack is a major breach of NASA protocol. The space agency forbids astronauts from bringing their own food on board because stray crumbs could wreak havoc inside the cramped capsules. So after Grissom takes a bite, he hides it away in his pocket. The rest of the flight goes off smoothly. And later that day, at 2.15 p.m., the Gemini 3 capsule splashes down safely in the Atlantic Ocean. The mission is hailed as a complete success. John Young and Gus Grissom did everything that they were set up to do, and they thought this was another big step in the space program. 
I bet they weren't even really thinking about the corned beef sandwich when it was all said and done. But the astronaut's illicit lunch won't remain a secret forever. When audio transcripts of the mission are reviewed, the incident blows up into a major scandal. And Grissom and Young are accused of recklessness. These crumbs floating around, they could have gummed up some machinery, they could have gotten into some wiring. The matter is even debated in Congress. They called this corned beef sandwich the $30 million sandwich because they thought that he had jeopardized the mission. It seems a simple sandwich is about to torpedo the careers of two pioneering astronauts. But just as Grissom and Young's fate hangs in the balance, something happens that will change their fortunes. The story breaks in the press. It was a very tense time in American history. And to be able to fixate on this little bit of fun, this little joke, I think people really responded positively to. Thanks in part to the public outpouring of support, Congress drops the matter. Both astronauts continue their work on the moon mission. But tragically, in 1967, Gus Grissom is killed in a fire on board Apollo 1. John Young, however, eventually walks on the lunar surface and goes on to command the first space shuttle. Over the years, space food also improves. Eventually, astronauts are allowed to supplement NASA's freeze-dried options with their own favorites, including pizza, candy, and even sandwiches. So John Young's act of defiance may have paved the way for some of the good cosmic cuisine we have today. A replica of the infamous corned beef sandwich is on display at the Virgil I. Grissom Memorial Museum in Mitchell, Indiana. It recalls two astronauts' culinary choice and the cosmic snack that almost grounded them for good. 우주에서 가장 재미있는 채널 디스커버리